Hello, my name is Jessie, and I am an educator here at Bywater Solutions. In today's session, I am going to show you how to use the inventory. When you are browsing through the apps at the top of the page, you will see a little brown icon for inventory. Once you click on that inventory button, that will take you into the inventory app. This will give you the opportunity to search through your collection. There are three functions for the inventory. The first is the instance. Think of the instance like your bibliographic record. This is where you're going to find information. Over on the left hand side, you'll be able to search by keyword, such as entering in like the title or a keyword that you want to find within the record. You can search by contributor, title, identifier, an ISBN or ISSN number. Subject, instance, number, and this will be a unique number or a query search. So if I come in and just enter in, let's say, the word ethic and perform a search, that will bring back any title that it finds in the collection. On the right-hand side, we're going to see that list. So in this case, it found one record. If I click on that record, it will then open a third tab where I can view more information about that record. I can see the title, any type of additional information, the unique num identifying number for that record. If I scroll down, I'll be able to see title level data, any series information if applicable, identifier information, contributor information, any type of descriptive information like the publisher, location, date, and as I scroll down a little bit further, I'll be able to see additional information like staff notes, electronic access, again, if applicable, any type of subject headings. Now, let's say we want to do another search. You can X out and that will take me back to my results list. Or I can come over to search and filter and now I can reset and perform another search or I can move on to my holdings. Holdings is the second part of inventory. That is where you're going to find updates about locations, or if it's a periodical or serial, information about the holdings of that periodical or serial. Now, you can of course come over here and again do a keyword search. You'll notice that it changes a little bit when I select holdings. I can do a keyword, ISBN, ISSN, call number, holdings, or key query search. I can also come down below and perform a filter search. Think of this almost like as a way to, to look at a list. So I can come in and do a location. I can come in and do a holdings location. So if I want to find everything that's in the annex, I can select that. Again, once I select a particular title from that middle list, it will take me in where I can now view additional information. So now in the holding statement, I can see that this is in the main library and I can see the call number. As I scroll down below, I can also see any items that are attributed to that particular holding. Now, again, you're going to see this view in a three panel window. Every time I open, it will take me into that next panel. So now I'm back where I can see those results. And if I come over to that first panel where I performed the search, I can either X out, and then that will now allow me to begin another search. The last piece of the inventory module is the item. The item is going to show the type of data about that physical holding or electronic holding. So for example, is it a item that is in a particular location? Does it have a barcode? Any additional information about that item? It also gives you the opportunity to drill down by, let's say, show me something that is on order. I can look at the items that are on order. I can show me anything that's awaiting a pickup, a hold that was placed, anything that's awaiting for that to be picked up. Again, I can click on that title. It's now going to open a new panel where I can view that information. 
So now I can see the barcode, I can see that status as awaiting pickup, meaning it's at maybe the circulation desk or a hold shelf where it's waiting for that student or faculty member to pick up that item. I can also click directly on that item and it will take me into a more detailed view of that record. So now I can see the item unique number, I can see the item barcode, I can see the item data, the type of material it is. I can see enumeration data, if applicable. I can see the condition of that item, torn pages, is it damaged? I can see any unique notes. If there was an item note that was attached to this item record, I would be able to see that. Next, I'll be able to see loan and availability. This again will allow me to see if this item can circulate, if it's a reserve, if it's a reference item. I can see that item if it's awaiting pickup. And then as I scroll down, I'll also be able to see location. If it is an electronic resource, I'll be able to see that information. And then at the bottom, I'll also be able to see any type of circulation history, showing me maybe that last check-in date. Over on the left-hand side, I can close this out, or over on the right-hand side, I will be able to make any type of changes. Edit the item, duplicate the item, delete the item, mark it as missing or withdrawn, or make a new request. If I'm requesting this for a student or faculty member, I can begin that process right here. This is the basics of your inventory module where you can either perform a search by the instance, which is the bibliographic record information, the holdings or your information on the location or the type of holdings you have for a serials or a periodical, and then finally your item information, looking at the barcode, can it circulate, where does this live?